All right, Shalom, Shalom. <clears throat> First off, and for most as always, I want to say, Kol Hamoyim La Yehawa Bahashem Yehawa Shai Bahashem Rachakwadash. Double honor be unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone that do rule and teach well. And of course, as always, I want to say Shalom to you, Ankiem out there that that's pushing this truth through the Spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahawa, Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rachakwadash. Shalom to the elect, the 144,000. Okay, so this lesson is going to be titled, A Great Humbling is Coming. Okay, A Great Humbling is Coming. You know, and, um, you know, the, uh, the pride, you know, the pride here in Babylon is, is, uh, you know, it's very high here, you know, you know, and that's been the whole, you know, that's, you know, uh, one of the uh, vibrations, you know, that's within Babylon, you know, uh, being prideful, you know, being wicked, you know, this place is a very, you know, evil society, you know, now it may look like peaches and cream, you know, it may look like it's, it's not, you know, bad, it's not, you know, wicked, but really, you know, and on in all actuality it is, you know, because we've been, you know, um, woken up to the fact to know that we're in a wicked society, to know that we're in a land where the most high is basically, you know, uh, um, pushed to the side, you know, you know, uh, we're well, actually, let's get that real quick. Okay. This is the book of, um, let's see, where is it at? The book of Hosea chapter four and verse one. It says, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shai, hath a controversy with the inhabitants, okay? With the inhabitants of the land. Now, who are the inhabitants? Now, of course, the the the, uh, the context of this scripture is going in about, you know, Jake, Israel, right? But, we, but this can apply to today, you know, with the people. You know, uh, the people in Babylon, you know, two thirds of our people, you know, the, the the heathen. Right. So we can use this today. You know, this applies today as well. And it says for the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shai, had the controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Right. The people, you know, the ones that are inhabiting, you know, this place. Right. It says because there is no truth nor mercy nor knowledge of the most high in the land, right? So there is no, you know, there isn't one lick of, of, of you know, thought towards how about Shemal Shana's place. But, you know, the only ones that's uh, pushing that vibration is the true servants of Yahweh about Shemal Shai, right? You know, his men, the hopeful elect, right? So being that there's no knowledge of the most high in the land, these people are wicked. These people are, you know, prideful. These people are, you know, um, evil, you know. So a great humbling is coming, man. You know, and, and a lot of people think that Babylon is going to keep, you know, be a be a be a, uh, a functioning society, you know, to, 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 to keep being prolonged. Right. But in the scriptures says otherwise, you know, the scriptures say that Babylon is going to be thrown down. It's not going to be prolonged. You know, and, and why is that? Because it's a prophecy, right? So a great humbling is coming. A lot of people are about to be confounded. A lot of people are about to be, you know, um, a lot of people are going to eat their words, you know, a lot of, you know, two thirds that scoff the word, you know, that, 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 are, that are prideful, you know, or that have offended the men, the Lord, you about to feel it, you know, you heathen are about to feel it. So a great humbling is coming to the inhabitants of Babylon. Okay, so this is the book of Second Edges, <clears throat> Second Edges, chapter eight, and verse fifty. Okay, and it says, "For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world." Right, man it says many great miseries, you know, many great afflictions, many great, you know, sorrows are going to be done to you people out here, right? Because you people would rather, you know, uh, serve your own bellies, you know, serve, you know, Satan, serve Esau, you know, excuse me, people would rather just walk in pride, you know, and just, 
you know, do as thou wilt, right? But little do they know that they're going to get, you know, blindsided by prophecy. Prophecy is going to prophecy is going to hit this place very hard, man. You know, prophecy is going to confine a lot of people that walk in great pride, right? And it says, for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the light of time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride, right, man? These people are very prideful, you know, even the ones that, especially the ones that bu that buck up against the gospel, you know, guys like, you know, Vocab Malone, you know, you have, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, there's countless people, you know, that buck up against, you know, this truth, you know, but soon they're going to get confounded, right? So it says, because they have walked in great pride. So great miseries are going to happen to you people because you walk in great pride. Great miseries come with great pride, right? And like the scriptures say, before it says pride go before destruction. Let's get that real quick. This is the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. And it says, it says pride go before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Right, man. So, you know, these people's downfall is going to be their pride is going to, excuse me, these people, uh, pride is going to be their downfall, you know? And, and, you know, and, and when somebody's prideful, you know, they're blinded by that pride. You know, they can't see, they can't see past anything. You know, they think that they're untouchable. They think that, you know, they're, you know, um, they can't, you know, be humbled. Right. And, and that goes to show just like, you know, the, um, the vibration of, of, of Babylon, of America, you know, you know, the, uh, uh, people think that America is going to win, you know, World War Three, things like that. People think that, you know, America's not going to fall. Babylon, excuse me, is not going to, you know, be blown to smith of rings. Like, but like I said, according to biblical prophecy, okay, this place is going to be uh, um, done away with. Okay, and to prove that, let's get this. This is Isaiah chapter um, 13 and verse... And I'll get to the point. Um, actually, let me start up a little bit. Isaiah 13 and verse 19, and it says, And in Babylon, the glory of, of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? Now, ancient Babylon, you know, wasn't... <clears throat> ancient Babylon, it wasn't um, uh, destroyed like, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, actually, let's, let's look it up real quick. All right. Right. Yep. It says, um, in, in 539 BC, uh, the Neo-Babylon Empire fell to Cyrus the Great, King of Persia, with the military engagement known as the Battle of Opus. Right. So, you know, ancient Babylon wasn't overthrown. With uh, with uh, fire and brimstone, you know it, it was it got uh, conquered, you know by by the Persians, right? So right here, you know what is that talking about? It's talking about this Babylon, the modern day Babylon, okay? America, you know, this place is 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 is, is prophesied to be overthrown, just like how Sodom and Gomorrah was with fire and brimstone. But the only difference is that this fire and brimstone is going to be in the form of nuclear missiles, right? And so that's how it's going to be overthrown, like, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. So it says, verse 20, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall they be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and sad trees shall dance there. And in the and, and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her day shall not be prolonged. Right, and that's talking about this whore, Babylon. All right, her 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 days are numbered. You see, you know, the days of Babylon is numbered, man, and there is nothing that anyone can do about it because you can't turn back prophecy. Okay, you can't rewind time, you know, and, and make prophecy come to a stop. Okay, let's get this real quick to prove that. Second Edge of 16 
in uh, verse 3, and it says, A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood, or may any one quench the fire and stubble when it have begun to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer, the mighty Lord sent of the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Right. The Lord is doing all these things. The Lord is sending these plagues on the Babylon, you know, and honestly, these, these plagues is prophecy, right? You know, the, the, these, the, these prophecies, you can't turn these, these, um, these, uh, these prophecies away because, you know, written in stone, you know? So as it says, the book of Isaiah, I believe the, uh, what's that? The, uh, um, let me look at that real quick. I believe it was Isaiah 46. Let's see. Um, that's a good one, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Let's see, Isaiah. Let's try this. Yep. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, and it says, So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Okay? So the Lord's word, you know, is it's done. You know, you can't, uh, just like, you know, a roller coaster. You know, once, that, once, that, once you're buckled in that roller coaster, and once that ride starts to go up and, you know, go up in a, the peak of the roller coaster and it goes down, you can't turn that back. You know, you got to wait for it to be done. Right. So like prophecy, you can't turn prophecy back. All right. The Lord is sending these plagues out. The Lord is doing this. You know, the words of the Lord, you know, they, you know they're going to they're going to prosper. You know, they're going to come, come to pass. Right. So. So these proper people, you know, regardless, guess what? They're going to feel it. You know, they, they you know they're going to feel uh prophecy hit them hard. You know, you know, they're gonna feel the burn. <laughs> okay. We get it off on this. Isaiah 13 and verse 11, and it says, And I will punish the world for their evil. Right, man. This world is very effing evil, man. You know, because you know, because the because the evil, you know, is, is in power. You know, the wicked is in power. So of course, the, of course, the world is going to be evil, right? Just like how in, in our world, you know, in our kingdom, you know, it's going to be righteous because the righteous are in rulership. You know, that's the perfect balance that we have about small shy, right? And it says, and the wicked for their iniquity, right? You know, you know, the wicked, you know, uh, uh, who is the main wicked? Esau, Edom, you know, the wicked, Edom, mighty elites, starting off with them, you know, and also too, you got wicked ass Jake's out here. Two thirds, you know, you got wicked Israelites, you know, within the community of Israel, you know, these people are just wicked. You know, they're, you know, you got niggas out here that are just evil. You got Edomites out here, the heathens are wicked out here, you know. We're living in a wicked world, man, you know, and just because you may, you like, you may not see the wickedness, you know, day by day, just know it's, just know it's out there, you know, the Lord, you know, has opened us up. You know, has opened up our minds, you know, our, our ears and eyes to, you know, to see and hear of the, of the wickedness that goes out here in Babylon. You know, that's why we are vexed with the free conversation of wicked. You know, that's why we are vexed because of all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof here in Babylon. You know, and it says, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Right. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Now, let's get real quick. Let's get that. And the uh, NLT, I'm curious to what it, I'm curious to what it says in the NLT. Isaiah 13, and verse 11, same verse. And it says, I, the Lord, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, will punish the world for his evil and the wicked for their sin. Right, man? You know, it says that the uh, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. And was 9 and verse 8. Now, of course, the context of that scripture is going about, you know, uh, Israel. You know, because, you know, Jake is wicked, man. 
But that but but that uh, precept can be applied today because we're in a sinful kingdom. We know we're in a wicked society. We're in Babylon. Right. And it says, I will crush the arrog the arrogance of the proud and humble the pride of the mighty. Right, man. People are going to get very uh, uh, humbled out here, you know, and perfect, you know, circle, you know, a perfect uh, uh, because this lesson is titled a humbling is coming. You see, so a lot of people are going to get humbled by prophecy. The Lord, how about Shemal Shai is going to find a lot of people, you know, and, and the men of the Lord, you know, us servants, us, you know, us prophets, we're going to be laughing at the calamity, you know, and, and the distress of the wicked out here. You know, because we're living in the time of seeing the downfall of our enemies, you know, and we're in the time also of, of getting that victory, you know, because deliverance is nigh, you know, our salvation is nearer than when, than, than when we believed. OK, so that being said, I just want to say, call him La Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honor be unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone that do rule and teach well. And once again, I want to say shalom to you, Ankim, out there that's, that, that's pushing his truth through his spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kakwadash. Shalom to the elect, 144,000, and Lord's will, the Lord's sheep was edified. With that being said, shalom.